Hello and welcome to Kolkata. I'm the BBC's India correspondent, Sanjoy Majumdar, and we're just outside the headquarters of the Missionaries of Charity, the order that Mother Teresa founded nearly 70 years ago. Now, within the past hour, Mother Teresa has been declared a saint by Pope Francis in the, at the ceremony at the Vatican. She is now known as Saint Teresa of Calcutta. She spent more than half a century in this great city, just living in this building right here, inside which she now lies in rest. That's where you'll find her tomb. But these are the streets and the slums beyond where she dedicated her life, working with the sick, with the dying, working with people who are homeless, and working with orphans who she dedicated her life to. Now we're joined today by a very special guest. I'd like you to meet Gotham Lewis. Gotham now lives in the UK. He runs many things. He's a musician. He runs a flying club for the disabled. But Gotham was afflicted with, with polio as a very young child. And he was actually, as far as I understand, rescued by Mother Teresa. Just, just tell me what, what, what happened to you. I started my life in the other twin city of Calcutta, which is known as Howrah. And because of geography, poverty, and disability due to polio, I ended up being rescued by Mother Trees and the Missions of Charity because my original birth family weren't able to look after me. And I had five happy and safe years in Shishi Vavan, which is just down the road, which is the children's orphanage of Mother Teresa. You've, you've met her several times. You've now made a film on Mother Teresa. Describe to us a little bit about what she was like uh, as someone who spent so much time with her, even though you were very little. My early days were mostly full of nightmares. And when I... I did have very fond memories of her, and those are the ones that I try and treasure. For example, when I stopped talking for six months, she brought in psychiatrists to unlock my voice. Or on a Sunday, we would all get carried in our nice Sunday clothes to the chapel right above my head and she would give the Sunday Mass to all the kids. And like any parent, Sanjoy, um, it's unconditional love. There is no uh, special one. And um, I wouldn't be here, I guess, to celebrate her sainthood, um, but it's the responsibility that I have now to make the most of that life. Uh, just to remind you, we are live in Kolkata outside the Missionaries of Charity. You can look inside now and see that the sisters of the order and members of the public are watching the live feed from Vatican City. They were here when she was canonized just a short while ago by Pope Francis, and they're continuing to watch the ceremony. It's a very, very special day. But as you've been hearing, not just special for the sisters of the Missionaries of Charity, but also for people like Gotham Lewis. And Gotham, I have a question here from Sam Yaniek, who asked, what was she like? She was very humble, but you certainly don't want to get on the wrong side of her. Um, she was my second mother. She would always come and check up on her children. But ultimately, ultimately, what she was trying to do was through serving humanity, connect to God. It's interesting. Uh, you heard Gotham talk about how humble she is. It's something you hear everybody say when they describe Mother Teresa. But I've also heard her described as being very persuasive. She was somebody who could make you open your purse strings and donate generously to a cause. I think that's why she was very successful. Um, there's an interesting question here coming from Leela Guha, who asks, why are non-Catholics expected to care? And I guess that's interesting for people who are not part of the Christian faith. It's not about religion. It's about the human race. And it's about the spirit that we can all identify with, regardless of geography, border, race, religion. So there have been some incredible people throughout history does it really matter what religion they are if they are trying to inspire change and make the life and the world better? And it's interesting, if you just look around you and just see the kind of people who've come here, it's, it's very true that although she's a Roman Catholic saint at the moment, she is, she, people were drawn to her not necessarily entirely because of her faith. They were drawn to her because of what she did. Um, and India has a long tradition, really, of venerating venerating faith. They, they respect it, they value it, they understand it. And that's why 
Her, her tomb is visited, as you know, Gotham, by many people every day. And, and we'll probably find that more and more people come here. It'll, it'll become sort of a pilgrimage center, isn't it? For me, I had the opportunity to go to Rome, but my pilgrimage was to come back to the city of joy and be in Calcutta to celebrate what the city as a whole has achieved for humanity because there would be no Gotam Lewis or Mother Teresa had it not been for Calcutta that brought us together. Uh, I've interested, it's a couple of questions here coming in, run from Jackie Warren. Jackie Warren, you, know, you want to know uh, why has it taken so long? She's always been a saint. And we've got uh, Bimal Gurung, Gurung, who says, what does it mean to be a saint? I mean, Gautam, you, I know you're no expert, but uh, this, is, this is really about uh, her ability to touch ordinary people and ordinary hearts, isn't it? That's really what the connection is. Sure. And there isn't a race to become a saint. What's the urgency? It doesn't matter whether that happens today or in a thousand years' time. And for the Catholic Church, sainthood is about touching the lives of other people and changing lives but in a very spiritual way that's about the faith that drives their spirituality so it's not about a a a name tag it's about the connection to god just to remind you again we are live at the missionaries of charity in the city of kolkata the city where Mother Teresa spent more than half a century working among the destitute, among the poorest of the poor. Within the past hour, she's been declared a saint by the Vatican City, by, the, by Pope Francis. And we're here with Gotham Lewis. Gotham grew up in Calcutta, unfortunately was afflicted by polio when he was, when he was a baby and was rescued as a young child from the streets of this great city by Mother Teresa because his, his family had abandoned him and he grew up in one of her care homes. Um, Gotham, we've got another question, uh, which I think has a lot to do with her as well as someone like you. Benny Jones says, Benny, you want to know, please tell us more about her missionary journey. And I know you've studied a bit of the life of Mother Teresa. You, you've made, uh, you've got photographs to show of her. You've made film, a documentary on her. What, what can you tell us about her missionary journey? So, <coughs> For her, Calcutta was the birthplace of her missionaries of charity organization, but that grew to over 120 countries. And when a human touches the lives of millions of people in the world, and the connection is identified with all people around the world, depending on what continent they come from, her message magnified. And it's, it was almost so fast that it was almost very difficult to keep a handle on the momentum that she started. But essentially what she was trying to prove is look what we can achieve if we harness our great strength to do good and look at what we can waste if we harness that energy for conflict. I think you get a sense there of, of just how Mother Teresa was able to touch so many, so many people. If you look around you, you can just see people who've come here from Calcutta, from across India, from across the world. Yes, there are a lot of journalists here, but there are a lot of people here just taking photographs for their own personal connection to record this moment, this moment when she did become Mother Teresa, uh, became Saint, uh, Saint Teresa of Calcutta. Uh, I've got a question from Mike Lazarus. Mike Lazarus, uh, you want to know, first of all, will she get a new name? Yes, she is now known as Saint Teresa of Calcutta. That's uh, because she's named after the city that she adopted and the city that made her one of its own. And uh, you've also asked about the two miracles. Uh, as you know, uh, if, you, if you perform one miracle, you are beatified, you are blessed. Uh, and that happened when a woman uh, from West Bengal, which is the state we are in, came forward and, and declared that Mother Teresa had cured her of a tumor in her stomach. The second miracle, which is what paved the way for her to become a saint, took place when a Brazilian man also came forward and said he'd been treated because he was very ill. I'll come to you, Gotham, for one last word, and then we'll wrap up. The last word that I want to say is Calcutta has produced the most amounts of Nobel laureates in India, including Mother Teresa. And she is also a woman, non-Indian, who received the highest award that India can give, which is their version of the Nobel Prize. I think that's a really good place to end because it immediately gives you a sense of why so many people in the city and across India 
are celebrating today because they see Mother Teresa as one of their very own. They see her as belonging to the city, belonging to this country, which is why they believe that it's an, it's an honor not just for her today, but also for the city of Kolkata and for the country of India. Thank you for watching us live on Facebook. I'm the BBC Sanjay Majumdar. Bye for now.